Hey everybody, Terry White here, and it's my pleasure to take you through everything that's new in the May 2023 release of Photoshop and a brand new Photoshop public beta. So I'm going to kind of do this in two parts. First part is everything that's shipped for everybody in Photoshop. You know, as long as you're a Photoshop user, you get these features. Then I'm going to talk about a public beta that you can download if you're a Photoshop user as well. So let's dive into the first things that are in here for everybody. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the brand new adjustment presets. So we have adjustment presets. So if you go to your adjustments panel, you'll notice that there are 30 plus adjustment presets that you can choose. You can hover over them to see what they look like on your photo. You can click more to get to all the rest. They're categorized. So portraits, landscape, uh, photo repair, creative, black and white, cinematic, and more. So for example, if I like one of these and I were to click on it, what it would do is apply a non-destructive adjustment layer. So for example, color pop. If I click on color pop, a non-destructive adjustment layer for vibrance in this case. Each one's a little different. So some you might get one or two adjustments, one, some you might get three or four, it depends on what it is. So if I want to make changes to this, I can go ahead and double click on the vibrance, get to my properties panel here, and I can go ahead, change the vibrance. So I'm not stuck with it. These are again non-destructive. You don't want them. You can turn them off, get see the before and after, and make continue to make adjustments to your photo based on what it started with from the adjustment. All right, so that's the first one. Adjustment presets, 32 new adjustment presets for you to choose from. Next one is going to be one of my favorites since I'm doing this kind of work all the time in my photos and my photography, and that is the brand new remove tool. All right, we have two goats here, and as sometimes you refer to goat as the you know initials, greatest of all time, we can only have one greatest of all time, so we're going to take the one in the middle, or the, yeah, the one in the middle of the frame here. So I'm going to humanely, temporarily, remove the one that's in the background. So I have the brand new remove tool. Now, you might have seen or work with the healing brush back when we first introduced that, great technology. Then we came out with a spot healing brush. And now the remove tool. And of course, along the way, we also did content aware fill. Now I have it turned off to remove after each stroke. So in other words, I have to commit to it when I'm ready. So this way I'm, I can go ahead and paint. And if I lift my brush up, it doesn't do anything because I uncheck the box to do it on the fly. All right, so now I can go ahead and just brush this all in, including the shadows. I'm not worried about the fence. And again, I'm just getting all of these areas here and making sure I've got it all. So it's AI based. So instead of just using the nearest pixels like the other tools used to do or still do, this one will use AI to figure out what I'm trying to do. So we'll go ahead and commit. We'll let it do its thing. And just like magic, just like that, it removed. And now we have one goat, the greatest of all time. All right, so that is number two, the new remove tool for removing big objects, things that are close to each other. Third one is something that uh, I turned off. It's normally on by default, but I want to turn it off so I can show you where it is. The new contextual taskbar. So the new contextual taskbar is here to help you or prompt you with what you might want to do next. Since I don't have any tools, I don't have anything uh, selected, it might think, hey, you, do you want to select something? Do you want to remove the background? So if I go ahead and click select subject, it does that. If I do have a selection made, which I now do, it will then give me options for that selection, including deselect. So it's a contextual taskbar that's always there ready to help you with what would be the next step. And uh, notice how it floated around. You can also pin it. So in whatever location it's in, it will stay pinned in that location. So that's kind of a bonus tip. All right, so the third one is a significant update to gradient. So I'm gonna hit the letter G to go to my gradient tool. I'm gonna just do a standard linear gradient here and I can go ahead and even uh, choose different colors if I want, but I'll use the last one I default it to. And normally when you apply a gradient, Number one, you don't see controls like this. And number two, it's kind of permanent. It's like painting the gradient into whatever area you did. But this gradient is on screen or on surface controls and it's non-destructive. So I can continue working with it as long as I want to. It adds a new gradient fill layer. As long as I select that gradient fill layer, I can go ahead and make whatever changes I want, including the color. So we can go ahead, oh, let's, Try and pick, pick something a little different there. Maybe, maybe something like that. Okay, great. And I can, uh, of course, add more stops as well. So if I want to add a stop, I can. 
and I can change the color of that stop just by clicking. So I can add as many stops as I need. I can control those stops. I can rotate this. I can still choose a radio gradient or any other kind of gradient that I want. And I have wonderful controls for my gradient on canvas. So there's my radio gradient. I can still turn it around. I can still control it. A little too carried away there, but there it is. There's my radial gradient that I can keep working with as well, plus all the other gradient options that you're used to. So on-screen gradient controls that are non-destructive in a gradient fill layer. And if you want to add a new one, just hold down the shift key and drag out a new gradient, and that will create a new gradient fill layer. All right, so those first, the four things I just showed you are in the regular release of Photoshop as of today. Now, I'm going to take you over to a place that you might not have been before. And that is, in your Creative Cloud app, in the beta section of the Creative Cloud app, so over here where it says beta apps, you can go ahead and install the public beta right alongside your release version of Photoshop. Because this is going to give you some new technology that is, I don't know how else to say it, but changes the way we use Photoshop. In my opinion, Terry White's opinion, this is the most significant update to Photoshop in the last two decades. So let's, without further ado, let's dive in. So go ahead and click install your uh, beta. You'll launch your beta separately. Uh, once you've got your beta launched separately, you can open up an image and you can start doing what I'm gonna do here. So I've got an image open and what I would love to do is, it, my birthday's coming up next week, but I don't like cupcakes. I like ice cream. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my lasso tool and I'm just going to go ahead and lasso this cupcake. And once I lasso that cupcake, I'm going to go ahead and go to Generative Fill right here on the new contextual taskbar. So this is brand new Firefly, Firefly based Generative Fill technology now in Photoshop. And I'm just going to type in Caramel Ice Cream Sunday and hit Generate. And this will actually use Firefly inside Photoshop now to take that area that I just selected and generate new content for that area. And as you can see, it did it. It did it great. So it gives you, number one, it gives you the prompt now in your properties panel. So if you want to change it and regenerate, you get the ability to go ahead and choose from three different choices that it gave you. Ooh, that's one of my favorites. I like that one. And if you want to generate more based on the same prompt without losing these three, just click generate again and it will generate three more on top. So you can keep generating, keep ideating on this as many times as you want to get different results or different variations until you find the one that you want. And this is doing a lot of things. It's adding the perspective, it's adding the same shallow depth of field, it's adding the shadows, it's, it's, it's nailing the lighting from the sparkler onto the subject because it didn't just look at, look at my selected area, it looked at the entire scene. Now, you can keep building on this. And it, by the way, it added it as a non-destructive layer and name the layer what you named in your prompt. So you can always turn that layer off, get back to your original and come back. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another just simple rectangular selection because, you know, what's a party without a toy? And I'm going to go ahead and do uh, toy robot uh, wearing sneakers taking a selfie. All right, that way we kind of know it's real because it's, no one has anything like that. It's going to generate it for us. So once again, progress bar, 10, 20 seconds, and it will go into go into Firefly and go ahead and make my toy robot wearing sneakers. There we go. We have three different versions of it. Uh, this one doesn't seem to be taking a selfie. This one is. Let's go ahead and do uh, generate one more time. See if I get a variation I want. And I can go ahead and keep generating this all day long, but we got more stuff to show. All right, so we'll let it do one more. There we go. That Now we're getting the kind of selfie that I want. Ah, there we go. That's it. And so again... 
look at the lighting, look at the shadows, look at where it's standing. It figured all of that out for me. So this literally changes compositing for the rest of our lives. All right, so next, let's go ahead and move over to this shot. This is a, a, a panel that I did from Milan in Italy years ago, and I never really used it because I, I didn't get there early enough, and I got all these tourists in the way. So I thought, well, could I use AI to kind of be a tourist remover? <laughs> so let's go ahead and grab my lasso tool, and let's just do one gigantic lasso around all of this stuff and all of these people all the way over here. I'm gonna come, come all the way back around the top like so. There we go. And I'm even gonna hold down my shift key and get this stuff over here as well to add to that selection. Now, when I click generative fill this time, I'm not gonna type anything in. I'm just gonna click generate and see what it thinks it needs. So just no prompt, generate, kind of maybe it will remove those people. Let's see what it does. And just like that, I have a clean scene for my Milan Cathedral shot. And I have three different versions of it. I kind of like the first one that it came up with. And there's my shot. I would now print this out and hang it on the wall. Now keep in mind, you don't always have to just remove something. You can add something as well. So if I were to go up here and choose uh, generative fill and type in clouds, let's see what it gives me for clouds. And you can make multiple selections. So if I want to put different clouds in different parts of the sky, shift select different parts of the sky and then generate the clouds and it would put them into different places. So there we are, we have our clouds. And again, I can toggle three through, even though it gave me birds that time, it gave me a cartoon cloud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> those are the clouds I want. And we'll stick with those for now. And if I wanted to generate more, I just do another selection and generate more. Or hit generate more now in the same area and let it do it. All right, next up. This one is mind blowing. I need a horizontal version of this shot. You know, we always, sometimes we take with our phone, we're used to taking vertical, but then you need it for a magazine, you need it for a banner, you need something wide. So let's go ahead and use our crop tool and uh, we'll go to our crop tool, there we go. We'll go back to our default colors and we will uncrop this image, we will outcrop. And this is also called out painting. So when I added the caramel sundae, think of that as in painting. When I crop out like this, I'm out painting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my rectangular marquee tool once again. We'll go ahead and grab a rectangle and I'm just gonna go ahead and include a little bit of that scene so it kind of knows what I want. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So hold down my shift key and include a little bit of that scene, a sliver of it. And then we'll go ahead and hit generative fill. And once again, I'm not gonna type anything in. I'm gonna trust Firefly, the AI, to do its thing for me. All right, here we go. And just like that, I have more office. I, it even extended the chair. It gave me the desk with some stuff on it. It expanded the window and gave me three variations to choose from of how it extended the scene. This chair is a little bit too big, so I probably wouldn't go with that one. And if you, as a result you don't like, you can just remove it. And that way now you're keeping just the results you want and you can keep generating until you get more. But I kind of, again, the first one is the charm in this case as well. Last but not least, because I would be remiss if I didn't exp explain this part too, you don't have to necessarily fill something that's already there. I can even start with a blank canvas. So I'm just gonna hit generative fill and type in my scene just like I would on the Firefly website. So for example, pastries on a breakfast table in the morning. All right, let's hit generate. Now, empty canvas. I gave it the scene to create. Maybe I want to create a background. Maybe I want to create something for um, a composite that I'm going to do. And I'm starting out with the base layer of what I want. And there it is. My base layer generated from Fire... Ooh, I like that one. Generated from... This one's even better. Generated from Firefly. And away I go. So those are just a few examples. You'll be seeing me do examples from here on out. But I wanted to get this one out of the way so you have a complete picture of what was released today, both in the release version and the public beta. Cheers, everyone. Go download that public beta. Go update your regular Photoshop. And we will catch you on the next one.